Welcome to Forbes India from the field. Our guest today, Abhinav Bindra, owns a piece of India's sporting history. In 2008, the shooter became the first Indian to win an individual Olympic gold. Bindra has also been a world champion and won multiple medals at the Commonwealth and the Asian Games. In this episode, he gives us a masterclass on Sitius Altius Fortius. It is about the journey. It is about uh, uh, the um, doing the everyday, uh, which I value more than outcomes. You know, sometimes outcomes, we are all chasing good outcomes. And, you know, you're chasing an Olympic gold medal or you're chasing Olympic success uh, or you're chasing some lofty goals in, 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 in business. They, they may or may not happen and, and uh, so many things are dependent uh, on, on, on small things coming together and sometimes things which are also not out of your, not really in your control. But what really is in your control is your ability to give it your best, what is your ability to, to fight every day and to put your best foot forward and to be better than what you were yesterday. As long as you stay true to these goals, um, I think you'd and, and move away from just complete attachment to, beta, uh, to uh, outcomes and really start focusing on the process. I think one is able to uh, handle the pressures of expectation far better because your own goals are then um, really directed towards perfecting the process. And if you perfect the process, at most occasions, the outcome generally goes your way. You know, we uh, as athletes, and I was completely guilty as well of believing in an equation, which is a gold medal equals happiness. Uh, whereas we really need to reverse that equation and make happiness a gold medal. We develop as athletes and we do put in a lot of effort in, in developing as athletes, but I think it's also equally important to develop as human beings uh, during the course of our journey. When we are faced with a challenge, and you, you talked specifically right now about self-doubt, I think one of the most important things is to accept it, to accept that you have a little bit of self-doubt because as human beings, what we naturally do is resist it. We resist it, we resist the feelings that are which, which uh, accompany self-doubt. And when that happens, it just starts to make everything just worse. But the moment acceptance comes, uh, the concept of coexistence also arrives. Uh, and I think that is the starting point of learning to work through self-doubt. I think another second attribute necessary and absolutely necessary in order to overcome self-doubt is maybe uh, instead of chasing self-belief, uh, perhaps we should start, at least I started chasing self-respect. How does one achieve self-respect or at least how did I try and achieve self-respect was by working hard and being uh, brutally, brutally honest to myself. Um, that am I giving it my best? It's not just about giving it your best on, on the day of an Olympic competition, but it is about giving it your best every single day. Uh, it is about asking your asking yourself the difficult question every evening. Have you put your best foot forward? And if the answer is yes, slowly and surely you start to build a lot of self-respect, and that starts to build security from within. You know, I will. I did perhaps did not have self-belief that. Um, before a game that I'm going to 100% win. And I asked myself again that difficult question, have I done my every, every have I put everything uh, to prepare for these games and at some Olympic events? The answer was yes. I was a winner even before I even shot the first competition shot in an Olympic game. Firstly, you have to accept that there's going to be chaos. And then you have to try and find calm amidst chaos around you. 
sport also teaches you one very unique uh, ability and that is the ability to continuously learn to adapt to changing environments around you you as a human being also keeps changing it's also about really being mindful of your own self and uh, continuously learn to uh, adapt uh, to your own changing self when failure also comes um uh, you know you have it also brings uh, disappointment and it also brings along uh, um a lot of uh, negative emotions uh, well and it is absolutely natural but you have to try and turn it around and you have to try and turn it around or at least i try to turn it around uh, by using it uh, uh, as a kick uh, to my ego with a steel tipped boot uh, so uh, that's how i try to channelize uh, difficult losses and difficult moments then you come to elements where uh, you know where um, things are a little bit out of your control uh, you you talked about my health concerns or you talked about accidents as well when a little bit you know you, my incident of my floor is well documented and I'm going to go into it and how do you get over those moments because those moments also make you bitter again i think i would go back to acceptance uh, and um, and the sooner you accept it uh, you just find a way to work through it and you find a way to again channelize your energies in a better way uh, more positively towards action a good ability to to work with different people uh i think uh, you have to uh, lead in a way to create environments which are secure and safe for people around you uh, uh to get uh, because it really is the job of a leader to get the best out of your entire team and then to get the best out of all the people who work for you um, and it is the job really of that leadership to create that enabling environment it's also important for leadership to to really create an environment where um, where people have the ability around you to to have difficult conversations and voice different points of views but i think the job of leadership is to allow these conversations to happen mm-hmm.